Hi everyone, Robert Rutherford here. We're at episode 21 already. We have another really interesting guest in here. We have Carlos Flores from Martin Brothers here in Los Angeles, California. How you doing today, Carlos? Great, man. Great. Thanks a lot for coming. Oh, it's 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 an honor. It's been waiting for this for a while. I even okay. lost sleep last night. I was going, man, Robert's going to just... You know, I'm going to be on the stand, and the last time I was on the stand, I didn't do too well. No. <laughs> That's no, why OJ got away. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, this is totally casual. No, and, right uh, Yeah, yeah. Cool. We, people want to hear these stories from guys like you that have been out in the field for a number of years. And I know that you had, uh, I think, some opportunities here recently to move into the office. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... Um, I was sort of doing the general foreman for a while, and then I started getting into budgets, started getting into, um, you know, schedule values and and just a little bit of estimating, just, of, you know, from, I guess it was the PM that was a little too busy at the time. He was asking me, like, okay, so, you know, what is it going to take? How long is it going to take? Well, you know, what do you throw a number at it? So I kind of just, they walked me into it. Mm-hmm. I backed into it, I should say. Sure. So then I was, um, about four years ago, three and a half, four years ago, I was doing pre-construction at the office for a job, a panel job, you know, one of these uh, jobs that we ended up panelizing. Mm-hmm. And um, Robert, you know, Clue, our president, he approached me and was like, hey, uh, you know, how do you feel about me? Actually, I thought I was getting fired. <laughs> He, uh, called you in the big office? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He uh, walks by me and he taps you in the shoulder. He's like, Carlos, can I see you? To, you know, and he's very stern. He's very, you know, Robert's like very, you know, good, sharp guy. And he taps you in the shoulder. He's like, hey, um, I need to talk to you when you a minute. And I went, whoa, okay. So I closed my browser and locked my pencil drawer and I grabbed uh, whatever I had. I thought I was like, well, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I walked in his office, like, oh, can you get the door? I was like, all right, cool, shut the door. He's like, um, you know, I, he started out by, you know, appreciating, telling me how much he appreciates what I've done for Martin Brothers over the past 25, 20, well, at the time, it was, I was coming up on 25 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was. A long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. company. Yeah, with, with Martin, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I shut the door, I sit down, and starts to, you know, again, tell me about what I've done and how much he appreciates what I've done in the past, and he watched me, and he's heard, you know, good things about me, and he's like, how do you feel about coming in here and managing, estimating? Because, you know, at Martin Bros, that's, that's what we do. We, like, like the, there's, we don't have just project managers. Mm-hmm. We do both. We estimate and manage. Right. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So... I, you know, at the time, I was like, well, I think I'm already doing it. He's like, yeah, I know. That's what I heard. So I want you to be, you know, full time. So I agreed to do that. And at the time, I was still finishing that one project um, in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So I stepped into those shoes. And, uh, you know, I, I it was almost like my first day on the job. Since that, Ever since that day that I committed Mm-hmm. It was like the clock just like went backwards and my first day on the job. Because then I was like, okay, I'm a project manager now. I have to do other tasks. I don't just have to help the project manager or assist him. Yeah. That's my job. Yeah. I have to do it now. Uh-huh. And at the time, um, I really didn't have a curriculum. It was just like, Okay, you're working under that guy. Go ahead and uh, do whatever he wants. And, you know, they're esti- senior estimators. they are got their own world. they got their own projects that they're going after. So they really don't have too much time for you. Mm-hmm. They sort of just, you know, hey, you know, you, you're going to learn this on your own. And yeah, but you, kinda, knew, you knew how to manage projects. I did, I did. But not, you know, there's a, there's a whole different world um estimating mm-hmm. and managing managing like uh, field management is different than when you get a job from an estimator and tells you okay look this is what i picked up this is your field budget 
and this is the way uh, this is your schedule and then at the, at the time i'm thinking like man that's a you know that's quite the task but i was all gun ho i was like man i'm doing it mm-hmm. so i did it you know i did it for a while i did it for about uh three years three and a half years um i ended up um you know helping out with the initial uh estimating for the lucas i think i you know mm-hmm. As at the same time that I was working on other projects. Sure. You know, finishing them, managing them. Got it. Estimating wise, I was doing little projects here and there. And um, so I remember thinking to myself at the time, I was like, man, I, you know, this is, uh, this is something that could, you know, evolve into something huge, you know? And I thought, well, is it, is it something that I want to do for another, 20 years Cause mm-hmm. I mean I'm, I'm, I'm only 50 I mean I'm sorry 49 years old at the time I was only 47 around this you're aging well dude <laughs> where's the grays man there's one there <laughs> there is one that my wife always uh gives me a bunch of crap for it's like no that's my lucky hair I, I keep that yeah, you've earned that one even my bar yeah yeah so you know I I, I thought it's like I I don't know man then so I the longer I did it the more that I looked at myself and my health mm-hmm. and everybody in that office told me, it was like, look, you're going to get lazy. You're going to get, you know, you're going to get fat. You're going to get them power lunches going. Power. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, you go, you know, and that wasn't, I was always active. I was always, you know, I had projects going at home. I, and, and this job at the office was just taking, you know, 10, 12 hour days. Dude. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was just too much. And yeah. it was all, my choice because I wanted to learn. I wanted to, there's always something that to, to, to be done at the end of the day. I was like, man, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. It's due today, you know. Sure. In the field, you don't have those hard deadlines that you have to. Somehow or another, you get the job done ahead in the field. Mm-hmm. Um, it might have been because, you know, I, I in the field I had, um, I had like one boss. <laughs> yeah you know mark yeah. and the project manager kind of it right no not even no not necessarily just my superintendent yeah mark, mark Penner. right mm-hmm. uh versus when i'm in the office i had you know i had several guys that would come up to me and question me mm-hmm. and at the time i was like what I, I, wait, what am i doing you know like sure Maybe I'm not fit for this. You know, maybe this isn't for me. So Mm -hmm. little by little, I had a little bit of a doubt, you know. So then I got, I got drawn into the uh, the Ram Stadium team. Mm -hmm. So I went out there, you know, the joint venture that we're doing still right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I was part of that team for a while. I was on site with three other PMs. Mm -hmm. And... uh, Everything was everything was well. I mean, everything was kind of you know. It took forever. I mean, it's it's kind of a slow process out there, for us anyway. At the time, mm-hmm. I've been, I left there April first. Okay. So I've been out, and that's probably been about oh, whatever five months, six months. And I had I didn't know it at the time. I had um, I had a lot of stress, work related. Mm-hmm because and i would you know i would talk to my boss i would talk to you know all my bosses a yep. couple of them probably you know and i would let them know that like what i was going through and and they're like well whatever you want to do you know you want to come back on the field and you know be a gf again or you know what we have is a hybrid they call kind of like what i was doing before mm-hmm. which i'm doing now it's you know i'm still involved with uh you know with change orders and budgets and but i I don't have the final say. I don't have, I'm not going to be held responsible if something doesn't make money. You know, Mm -hmm. my, now my job is to build it once. And if it doesn't make money, it's not something that I did, you know. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. So that's where I'm at now, Rob. Um, Got it. Well, uh, that that was a huge change of life, you know. Um, I feel a lot better health wise good you know but um i think uh, i think they're still left uh you know I, I i do miss it you know i do miss that uh because you're in the front end it's mm-hmm. even like i don't know if you can 
relate to this, but when you're doing pre-construction, mm-hmm. you're solving all these little tiny issues that you're foreseeing. Yeah, and that's that's where you're super valuable. You yeah, see that. Yeah, yeah exactly. You yeah. see that. So stuff. that's so that's where I'm at right now. Now it's like second nature to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. I mean, I see the smallest little thing, and that's just based on you know. 25 years of, of, of doing this, you know, being in the field, even though things have changed yeah. in the field, you know, we have new systems, you know, sure. like the one right behind you. Yeah. Um, you know, with the title 24, yep. that's a whole different beast. Yeah. Um, it, so it's, it's definitely uh, worked out. You know, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying what I do now again, but I do miss that front end, like estimating look there's nothing like way back i remember like when an estimator or my superintendent would call me hey i got i got a job for you come by and pick up these drawings that feeling that starting a new bra- a new job that yeah. unrolling you know your 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 draw your set of drawings yeah for the first time yeah you, you can't duplicate that yeah you got to rush from that it gets there's another challenge every time yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. every job is like that yep it's not you don't i'm never at least for myself i never got used to unrolling like hmm, okay well whatever you know well, it yeah. was always like bam like whoa look it's at a new this. present yeah like whoa look at this yeah like what you know flipping pages and yeah. whatnot well back then we flip pages i it's been years since i printed out a set of drawings yeah, now it's all on the computer. Yeah, yeah, it's all, all on your tablet. iPad, tablets, you know, mm-hmm. 3Ds and, yeah. you know, BIM and Rhino and yeah. Grasshopper. And, like, yeah, yeah it's it's a, it's a whole different world. But, you know, again, I, I do miss that aspect of being in the office, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, but it, it sounds like you were made for the field. So you, you gave that I, a shot, man. You gave it three years. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. You could, and, you know, I... Who, who knows? I mean, I, you know, I left that door open, and sure. and, you know, and that's uh, that's uh, with Martin Brothers. They mm-hmm. they know that if I want to come back, you know, they're going to give you that opportunity. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And at least you knew if yeah. you do go back into it, you know what to expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I yeah. I don't I don't think our estimating tools will change, you know, within the next few years, mm-hmm. but the field is changing rapidly. Yeah, where that's what I hear. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all these new t- you know technology and tools and no tape measures. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's tape measure. Like that's a forget about it. You that's like a plumb bob now, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like equivalent of a plumb bob. Yeah. Or a or trip. a guy. If you see a guy, you know, back then you you I, I would see guys you know lathers show up on the job with buckets, mm-hmm. a five gallon bucket yeah. and their tools in them. Yep. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You don't see that anymore. You know what these guys have? They have like tool chests, dude, with like an assortment of like lasers, you know, a laser for a wall, a laser for a ceiling, a laser for, you know, the dot here and the dot. Mm-hmm. I'm going, what the hell? You guys, I only need, all I need like to build. And I still tell all my, all the guys that I come across having their work. I'm like, dude, what, what are you doing with all these tools, man? Right. Like. All we do is put a screw in the wall, put a screw in a stud. That's yeah. all we do. Yeah. Like, what do you, what are you doing with all these tools? But they need, them. They, they, you know, it's it know, all these new grid system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 like I mean, they're tools. They, they mm-hmm. that's exactly what they use them for. Yeah. You know, for uh, to be faster, you know, mm-hmm. more productive. Yeah. Uh, more precise because that's mm-hmm. uh, that's huge to be. I mean, we we hold our guys. I mean, to the, like fire on their feet to make sure that they're one thing safe. Mm-hmm. You know, number one ultimate number one thing that we push our guys on to so be safe and to be accurate, mm-hmm. precise nowadays. Yeah, not close enough. Like when. Yeah, you know, well, we we always tried we, to stay within an eighth. <laughs> well, no, yeah. that's so no, that, that's too much. Now. Oh yeah, so yeah. Now now it's a thirty second. Sec yeah, thirty sec sixteenth. 32nd. Wow. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's it's crazy. Yeah. How come all this shit I'm looking at is crooked? 